welcome back to The 1% Show. If you're new here, tune in to hear me spin the yarns with authors, savants, and eccentric humans every week. Today on The 1% Show... So two weeks ago, I was uh, walking in the, in my forest, like around the corner, and um, I met these two dudes, and they were also actually tripping on mushrooms. And mm-hmm. for me, it, it has been like uh, two, three years since I tripped last time. And it was really funny to to hang out with these guys, and they were just enjoying the thing so much like this guy was like oh the sun man the sun is amazing he was just screaming it out like <laughs> that didn't care about anything but I, I could really relate with it like the small things you can just look at them and you, you can it's it's so weird man it's it's, it's mm. as if you see everything as new I had so many thoughts and troubles but now I can just feel okay and also the, the perfection and the imperfect it's it's all part of the same thing it's it's all yeah. what we need and it's it makes it perfect so wow yeah that that's incredible out of all the things ecstasy who who would have thought it, it it's just funny because I was sort of brought up in this light that, you know, all drugs are bad, don't do drugs, kid. And I, I just put drugs under the same umbrella, like every single one of them, even though they're all quite vastly different. And it's just incredible that you can derive benefit out of uh, some of these drugs, despite being told by society otherwise. It's, it's just incredible. So if, if someone would put a gun to your head, would you be able to... Uh, do, you think, do you think it you would be okay with it? I'd kick the guy in the nuts. <laughs> I'm your Aussie host, Brandon Nengeville, and it's time to kick back and enjoy the show. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by Blinkist, a pretty sweet app that gives you key insights from over 2,000 best-selling non-fiction books transformed into powerful packs you can read or listen to in just 15 minutes. These powerful packs are known as Blinks. Some of my favorite Blinks include super intelligence, deep work, and the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Head to Blinkist.com slash 1% better to get started. That's Blinkist, B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, dot com slash 1% better. 1% better is all words, lowercase, no spaces. Again, head to Blinkist.com slash 1% better to access key insights from over 2,000 best-selling nonfiction books straight from your phone. If you want to change society and stuff, we we shouldn't do it for the money. We should do it for an intrinsic motivation because we want to change the world, because we want to do good stuff. And that's what's happening with me as well, because I'm not trying to work for money anymore, but I'm working for what I think is valuable. And the cool thing is what's happening is that the money is coming to me as well without even focusing too much on it but but i'm i think i'm a lot a little bit of tough of topic because we were talking about <laughs> the idea is to talk about psychedelics so i think we can go back to that so if you have a, a question yeah ask, ask me something <laughs> <laughs> yeah fantastic no thank you for the the background information that's always good stuff yeah. so i am curious yeah. as to whether psychedelics does sort of tie into to what you're doing now and sort of this realization you had that you wanted to live the life you know, the way you wanted to and spread the good vibes. So could you um, take us back to when you uh, had your first psychedelic and tell us a bit about that story, about how you got your got, got, got your hands on your first psychedelic drug? <laughs> okay, so I was, um, I used to smoke uh, weed when I was younger. Uh, I don't do it anymore because I think it became, I, I become really lazy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I like my present state as well. Um, so first of all, first of all, I would like to say I'm I'm not really someone who's like really pro psychedelic or really against psychedelic, but I'm someone who thinks that it can bring you value. But I think also that it can be uh, it's it's a double edged sword because I think if you do too much, it it can ruin you. And I I've seen this happen to some people as well. And um, but for me, uh, I was really curious and I had some great experiences and these experiences really changed the way um, I look at life. So I think they're really valuable and for me it really helped. But I cannot say if so someone else will have like the same things. But um, how I started doing it, um, like I said, I, I used to smoke some weed with friends and uh, I actually had a, had a lot of relationships built on this, on, on smoking <laughs> weed. And <laughs> later I realized that's not really the, the best way to go. But um when I was, uh, I think my for- first year of college, I um, started reading about mushrooms, and this this just naturally naturally arose. I didn't really have an uh, idea what it was, but I thought it was a little bit more trippy. I would see some colors. I would be 
just a fun experience. So I talked about it with some people from my study and um, they were also interested. And so we decided to take them and it was at uh, a friend's house and it was really nice because uh, indeed it was pretty trippy. So I was just lying on the floor and I was just looking at the ceiling and everything was moving. And for me, it was so friendly and so lovely. And But I also got a different kind of experience, not just a trippy thing, but I realized a lot of things. So at that moment, when I when I did it the first time, I came in the perspective of knowing. I, I had some friends that I talked about with philosophy and stuff a lot, but I couldn't really connect everything together. And when I did psychedelics the first time, there was mushrooms, everything just connected. It was like all these things, all, all these these... Yeah, my mind was just blown, you know, and and then at that moment, I realized I started thinking a lot about religion and about God. And at that point, I realized that what those religions are talking about is 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 about this God, this source, this this thing. And, and, and all these religions, they think it's so important that they want to share it with everyone. But the problem is that a lot of these things are misinterpreted and it works from the outside in. So. What happened for me was that I realized that what they are talking about is this now, the, the now that this moment, there is everything is perfect, everything is great, everything is okay. And you can call it the creator, you can call it God, but there's something inside you that can feel that everything is perfectly fine right now. And that really helped me a lot. And also I started thinking about Jesus and I always thought he was a cool dude. So I thought it was an interesting person to think about. And he... I realized that he was talking that we are all the son of God. He was saying that everyone is this. And he just tried to put his message in words, but the religion, they misinterpreted and they said, okay, you are the only son of God. Now we have to obey you or whatever. But Mm -hmm. he was talking about that we are all this and that everything is fine and that everything is okay. And that's what I realized at that point. And I, of course, I never know if I'm right, but at that point, everything was so clear and so fine. And I still take it with me always. And after that, I really... I had a different outlook also on religions that they were all just trying their way in. And later, like at this point, when I, when I think about religion, um, I still think it's, it, it goes the wrong way around. Like, for example, I think also when I will, will have ch- children, I think I will just give them the permission to experiment with everything they want. Because when you say you cannot do this, you cannot drink, you cannot uh, try uh, mushrooms or whatever, then those people get curious and they cannot find it out for themselves. Yes. So I came to the conclusion that I that I didn't um, that I didn't have to drink, that I don't have to smoke weed to feel fine, that I can be fine right now. So all I do is drink water and just chill out. But I came to this conclusion because I tried all this stuff, and then if, eventually I was like, "Oh wait, this is not the way anymore." And but when you say you pressure someone saying you have to do this, then it doesn't work. It's it's forced. And I think that that's, that's uh, a different way of thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of things came out of that experience. <laughs> and later I tried it again. <laughs> uh, I tried it again with some friends and uh, we went in nature because they said it was, uh, would be a great experience to try mushrooms in nature. And um, I did this. And at this point, Something similar happened, but in a total different way, because I was standing on this hill. Um, I live in The Hague, and it's, it's like um, nearby the dunes, nearby the sea. And we just found this spot. There was no one there, and phew, just amazing. And I was standing on the, on, on the hill, and I just looked outside, and my perspective just flipped around. Like the things I looked at, I became those things. I, I wasn't just looking at them anymore. I was the whole thing that was happening. I was not not myself. And this is... For me, I think this is what, what nirvana is. This is the experience of feeling that everything is connected and that everything is one and that everything is, again, okay and perfect and it's fine. And it's always right now. So um, our minds are always above this. We're always thinking and stuff. But when your mind becomes silent, you just see that everything is one. And uh, I just told Brandon as well in, in, in the introduction, I, I told him that um, I was there with some friends and <laughs> these friends, they, they were like different aspects of myself. So it wasn't just my friends anymore, but it was me, but in a different way. And I could totally relate with everything and everyone. And that was so spacing. <laughs> so a really good experience as well. And later on that trip, I sat down and I was um, thinking a bit and I was playing with some sticks and I was thinking like all the experiences that I can have in this body. And then there was this idea that everything that I'm experiencing, everything that I'm experiencing, I I have already experienced it. So (laughs) 
I was sitting there and I tried to build some stuff and I was, okay, this is creation. I can buy, build stuff with sticks and, but this is also just my experience. And then, then I thought, okay, what's going to happen now if I close my eyes and if I'm going to go to sleep? And I, I just lay down there and I closed my eyes. And when I opened my eyes again, my friends came to me and they said, okay, guy, um, Rijn, we're, we're done. Let's go. Um, let's go to, uh, to home. And at that moment, I was like, okay, I'm going to go again back in life. And, and there's some part of me at that point that thought, okay, well, maybe this is the dream. I, 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 I fell asleep and now I'm dreaming again. And this is going on and on. And sometimes I still think about it. Maybe I'm still lying there in, the, in nature, just sleeping. And this is all just part of the dream. It's another aspect of going on, you know, it's, yeah, a really nice thing to think about. And yeah, actually, that's what I wanted to say <laughs> about this experience. Wow, that's, Marin, yeah. you, you, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm blown away. To, to the listeners listening in right now, um, uh, Marin, actually, uh, we can't see each other at the moment because we've tried to boost our audio quality by turning off video, which is working now, which is great. So you can hear the conversation. But I've just been sitting here awestruck. I was almost on tippy toes, Marin. Um Man, man. Dude, I'm dude. just burning yeah. with fire and curiosity at, at, at everything you've just said. Uh, holy crap. I don't even know <laughs> know where to start. Um, so we're really enjoying listening to your story. This is incredible. I'm going to take us back maybe five steps to that part where you first started talking about your experiencing uh, this connectivity. So you, you said you felt connected to sort of everyone and and everything. And now I, I have read about the same sort of phenomenon in a lot of other people's experiences on psychedelics. It seems like a very, a very common occurrence. So I'm just wondering, like, is it possible to, to even further to describe that, that feeling more? Cause I, I'll, I'll tell you what, just briefly, before I came on this podcast, I was out on a walk and I was reading this book about psychedelics and I was trying to intellectually, just on an intellectual level, to understand what it's like to be connected to everyone and everything and feel like I'm everything. And then this magpie, which is a bird here in Australia, it came down and swooped me in the head. And so it got me thinking. <laughs> I thought, I thought, if I'm everything, I'm the universe and everything's connected, why the hell is this bird swooping me? Like, it, it's like I'm swooping myself. And so I'm just sort of stuck in this cycle of thinking. Like, I, I just can't comprehend what you're saying here i feel like i need the psychedelic experience myself to understand what you say when everything's connected or you sort of feel like the universe or something along those lines so do you reckon you can give it your best effort to sort of describe that that connectivity experience in full detail i see we'll see where we go <laughs> um there are, are a lot of thoughts coming outside of my mind now. I'm, I'm thinking about um let's see well when you look outside just just can, can you look outside do you have a window or something i do i've got a window right here <laughs> nice so look outside and it, it's not really different from being who you are right now but it's just looking outside and just look outside and just look at some trees or stuff and try to keep on looking and what happened for me was just it's 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 still that i'm seeing it's still that i have a body and stuff but I'm living in this world and this world is also me because the whole um, experience, the things that you see, they, 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 they happen inside your head. It, it happens inside your mind. And yeah, like I say, <laughs> it's, it's really hard to describe it. Um, what you say about the bird that's, that's like hitting you, I, I think actually that, that, that is true, that, that you are <laughs> doing that to yourself. <laughs> I, um, do you know actually uh, Alan Watts? Did, did you ever hear of this guy? He's like yeah. a really cool philosopher. Yes, yes. Um, I've just been uh, listening to his uh, videos recently on YouTube. Cool, yeah. So that's like the, he, he can really describe these things well. I think he can do it way better than I can do it. But it's a good way to try it for me as well, because I would love to uh, to talk about these things in words. Um, but I think you should just have it, the experience for yourself. I, I can talk about it. And like what I say, everything is connected. That's 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 the main thing that I, I just, you are the trees, man. You are the, you are the wind. You are, you are. <laughs> It's it's everywhere. It's in everything. Yeah. Oh man, my my curiosity is on fire. See see, no one can really uh, and it's no one's fault. But 
it, it just seems to be one of those things yeah. where you, it, you really have to experience it for yourself. Um, now, going off on a tangent here, I know it, it's sort of like uh, explaining what depression, like full-on clinical, that real depression that um, some people unfortunately experience. Like, But it's mm-hmm. it seems to be something that can't be explained in words. You can try your best, but until you actually experience it, that's where the real understanding comes yeah. from. So I feel like I'm trying to ask you to explain something that's unexplainable. But man, it's just my curiosity. So I got to ask. <laughs> you, 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 you've made yeah. a great effort considering yeah, yeah, yeah. English sure, is necessarily fine, yeah. your first language. So well done. Maybe it's something like um, when you go to the, to the forest and you are completely alone and silent and there's nothing. You just feel like there's no, nothing else going on. And I, actually, it's, all, it's also in the city. But I think it, it, it becomes most aware when you look at a sunset or when you are sit or when you have a really beautiful experience i think those are the moments that you can grasp a glimpse of it and i don't think it's the it's it's a necessity to experience this for forever i don't even think that's possible so yeah think about like the most profound experiences you have had in your life maybe your first kiss or maybe um watching a sunset or maybe even sex whatever just dissolve you you lose yourself you become and actually, these things also happen when we watch a movie. So this, it's, it's like as if we disappear, as if you are the one that's disappearing. And then you become the whole. But we are not aware of it often because we are watching the movie and that's when we forget or having sex or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that's the best thing I can come up with. Maybe watching a sunset, watching, having a great experience. Do you have, do you have experience that, that you think that's like really... <sighs> In your life that you did you <laughs> that, thought, this this is so beautiful this is so hmm. i'm tr- i'm trying to think I, I i can definitely relate to the being sort of sucked in into a flow state where you sort of you forget about everything and you're just homed in on on one thing um yeah and that's sort of when i used to ride my unicycle competitively uh, for eight years throughout my my teenage yeah. years and it's uh it's a very challenging sort of thing with do all sorts of stunts on on these unicycles and you have to be very very focused and you sort of just get uh get lost in it so i do know the feeling of of coming out of that but i never remember myself going into it (laughs) and i think that's that's the thing we're talking about it's you are in that state but you also normally we're not aware of that but it's about being in that state and being aware of that you are there and and that's that's i don't think it's really it's it's pretty hard to get it possible right now with our thoughts always over it like because we will think oh now i'm in it but when you're thinking that it's already gone you know so, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah see this is inter- this is interesting stuff i could talk about this for 24 hours man um okay okay so nice, dude. so yeah. I'm just so glad the audio is working now. This is great. We can have a, a conversation over the internet. Imagine that 20 yeah, years ago, absolutely. they would have called us crazy. But look at us now. We're, we're speaking through microphones halfway across the world. <laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. Um, man, that's that's just incredible. I can't get over this. Uh, okay, okay, so I've got more questions. Ah, uh, Where do I start? Um, yeah, I have, a, I have another uh, a mushroom experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, can talk uh, interesting stuff as well um i went with um we have this house in like this 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 small part where we, well a fr- friends of us have this house and we did it with a whole group also again mushrooms and like this connectivity most people experienced it so it kind of happened for the whole group only there was this one guy who didn't really could grasp it with an iced tea <laughs> pack an iced tea um how do you say drink well, uh, Carton, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, in the evening, I was, um, I, my brother was also there, and I, I was doing it with my brother. And for us, we became like the same thing. We, we, we really understood each other without even talking, and that was really a nice experience. And at that point, I didn't really feel that I should be tripping anymore because I, I, I had understood the message, but that was just a fun experience. But at that trip, I had some really interesting experiences. And one of them was walking there. And you have weird thoughts when you are on mushrooms. Like everything is really abstract and stuff. But I was walking there and I was thinking, oh, man, the demons are coming. And I, was, I just saw, saw the shade coming out over the, over the. it was again at the, the sea, uh, over, over this part of the dunes. And then something in my head said, oh, wait, the demons are my friends. And right at that moment, then what I decided is, a friend of me came around the corner and said, oh man, Marijn, you shook me really hard. <laughs> Shit, dude. Uh... And, 
<laughs> and the same thing, I was lying with my brother somewhere else and um, we were the whole group and there's this one guy and he's really big guy and he kind of connects the group together. And I said to my brother, you know, this guy, Marta, he's really a great leader. He really sticks together. He, he really gets the group together. And at that moment when I, this guy was standing above me and gave me his hand and brought us back to the group. And, well, we, we talk about this. The, the, there's a lot, a lot of hype about the law of attraction and stuff. But I think on that trip, I had some kind of experiences that my mind and the world outside were interconnected. We were walking on the beach. And at that moment, these experiences feel so real. Like everything, it's all energy. And you, the way you perceive it kind of changes the way that it's happening. And I, I have no idea if you can control this. And I don't really want to control it anyway, because I like life as a surprise. But those experiences really made me think that 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 uh, about some kind of dream state you, you mm. know like i told you before about when i when i fell asleep and maybe i'm still asleep and this is just a dream um there's also a lot of about lucid dreaming this time and, and mm. in lucid dreams you can create life the way you want it you can just make everything happen and mm -hmm. at that trip i kind of felt a little bit like it that, that everything just changes <laughs> by the way that i look at it so yeah I think that was also a pretty nice experience. Mm -hmm. Also, another fun thing: <laughs> I was looking at a at a, um, this electricity house. You know, these small ele electricity houses, mm -hmm. and it was just standing there on the beach. You know, <laughs> and I was looking at it and I was like, "How can I know sure that this is an electricity house?" For, <laughs> at, at that same point, moment, it was like as obvious that that was like some alien device that was put there that was an electricity house but we all take that for granted like yeah we we have like this thing oh this is an electricity house but at that moment it was like dude what is it <laughs> and so it's it's yeah <laughs> so two weeks <laughs> so two weeks ago i was uh, walking in the, in my forest like around the corner and mm -hmm. um i met these two dudes and they were also actually tripping on mushrooms and mm -hmm. for me it, it has been like uh, two three years since i tripped last time and it was really funny to to hang out with these guys and they were just enjoying the thing so much like this guy was like oh the sun man the sun is amazing <laughs> he was just screaming it out like <laughs> that didn't care about anything but I could really relate with it. Like the small things, you can just look at them, and you you can. It's it's so weird, man. It's 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 mm. as if you see everything as new. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow! 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 So so after the the psychedelic experience has ended for you, let let's say three months after, when you go out for a walk and you you look at a tree or you look at a sunset, do you do you now appreciate it in like a, a new light? Uh, yeah, I really do. Yeah, I I I always. Um, try to be aware of the, the the small stuff, the 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 just the nature and the sun and yeah, really, man, I, I really love it. Um, yeah, everything is so so beautiful, and I'm I'm aware of that every day. Yeah. Wow. And you you also mentioned uh, you you communicated with your friend who was also tripping, and uh, you could sort of communicate with that, each other without even talking. So. I've heard about a few of these experiences before, so it's almost like uh, telepathy, as if you you understand each other without talking. Could you could you explain that a bit more? Like, did you talk after the trip and say, "Oh yeah, I was thinking the same thing," or so, what? What sort of went through your mind there? Well, it was with my brother, so we already knew each other really well, of course. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I once had the experience, like the 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 second trip when I was looking at my friends, I was really silent. I I, I couldn't talk. I was just sitting there. And but for them, they there was um, they they tried to interpret me, you know, like they 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 had ideas of me when I was just being silent. But with my brother, it really felt like we just could see through each other, and we did talk about it later. Yeah, that we could just. <laughs> We, that we could just say that that we that we that we felt so connected and yeah. Mm. At one point, I said something like in the trip, I said uh, something like God is laughing or something, and then we both started laughing really hard, you know. And <laughs> that you, yeah. And I think I think I always have that with my brother. We're we're really different kind of people, but we're just also really close together, and and that's mm -hmm. really nice to have. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> we, yeah. We did talk about it, and for him it was the same. So, but also on that same trip again, there was also this guy, and I didn't really know him much. But I, again, I was really silent. I, I I cannot talk much when I'm I'm doing it, because words don't feel like they can grasp what what's going on. And like I I already know already now that when I'm talking about it, I can't really grasp it either. Mm -hmm. But also there, there was this guy, and he he um 
he projected his own images on me when I was just sitting there. And he, he, he had like thoughts about it. you're doing this or and he started saying really weird things and stuff. But it was all his own projection. And I think that's often what happens also when people walk on the street or when they when they talk to people, they're just projecting their images on on someone else. And also, I have another experience uh, that, that's really nice, and that's um, when I um, did ecstasy. And this has to do with the projection thing. Not that much, I just tried once. Mm-hmm. And um, I always had some, well, after, after the break of my, with my first girlfriend, I had some troubles with, um, with relationships in general. Um, I, I, because my first girlfriend was like the perfect girl. I, 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 I totally made her like the, 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 the queen, you know, she's mm-hmm. like the, the best, best thing I could imagine. And she became my girlfriend. I was so happy about it. But later I realized that she wasn't perfect either. Mm-hmm. So after that, I really had some trouble when, when, when we broke up, I had some trouble um, falling in love again to, because I could always see like the, the, the bad stuff about girls and I could always see the, 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 the weird stuff and, and ne- no one was perfect, you know, and I was still looking for someone outside me to complete me. Mm-hmm. But when I did ecstasy, I was at a festival and there was this girl and I, Normally, I wouldn't really be attracted to her, but I did ecstasy and I totally fell in love with her. I was like, <laughs> mind blowing, like, wow. <laughs> and well, we, we start, walked hand in hand and stuff. It was really wow. romantic. But later when I started to think about it, I was like, it's not her that's that's the one that, that I, but it's me that's in love. It's my own projection that's, that's the love, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I wasn't... Um, I shouldn't look outside for the perfect person, but I should look inside and feel that I am the one that's feeling the love and I can choose to feel the love for everyone else. And yeah, mm. so I, I was with this girl um, at that time. I, I had like a friends with benefits relationship, but mm-hmm. after that, I could really fall in love with her again. And she's still my girlfriend. We have a really steady relationship and it's really nice thing to have experience because I had so many thoughts and troubles, but now I can just feel okay. And also the, the perfection and the imperfect, it's, it's all part of the same thing. It's, it's all yeah. what we need and it's, it makes it perfect. So, wow. yeah. That, that's incredible. Out of all the things, ecstasy, who, who would have thought? It, it, it's just funny because I was sort of brought up in this light that, you know, all drugs are bad. Don't do drugs, kid. And I, I just put drugs under the same umbrella, like every single one of them, even though they're all quite vastly different. And it's just incredible that you can derive benefit out of uh, some of these drugs despite being told by society otherwise. It's it's just incredible. So stories like that just make me, they make me smile. That's incredible. (laughs) Killed it, yeah. (laughs) Wow. So it it almost gave you like a, so it just gave you this complete new perspective. I guess... I guess you would have had these beliefs that, you know, all girls are bad, but because you you took that ecstasy and then you had that experience where you felt love again, it's sort of, I guess, I don't know, you, you put it better than me. I don't really know what to say, but I guess it gave you that belief again, except in a new light, how you, you feel it's coming from you, not from the outside world. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's... So, and I think that, yeah. that, that's often what we do also. Like we are looking for a perfect life, you know, we, we want to have the perfect car. We want to have this or we want to have that. But I think that's the other way around. That's the same with what I was talking about with religion. We're, we're always trying to change the circumstances. Like, for example, when I have the perfect girl, then it will be fine. But it's not the girl that should be perfect. It's just your, yourself. It's the way you look at things, the way you experience things. So I can be as happy with, 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 with my bike as when I, when I have a Ferrari, but there are also people who, who are not happy with a Ferrari yet, you know? So, mm. yeah, wow. it's all your own perspective on things. It's all your own way of viewing it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I feel like you've sort of got more of a, an emotional grasp on this uh, and a, a much more real grasp on this sort of wisdom. Like you, you hear about this sort of stuff intellectually. You know, you watch a video of some success guy saying, oh, you know, you won't be necessarily happy with a Ferrari, but you sort of, I don't know, I feel like you've sort of really experienced that in a way. So that's really interesting. Um, so going back to, to psychedelics, uh, we're still sort of on the topic. You mentioned something about is okay. So, is there a difference between LSD and psilocybin, especially for a beginner going into psychedelics? Like, is there a difference in what we should take first if we're interested in doing this? I think uh, I think mushrooms would be the best to try, try first, but that's all, just my experience. I, I I tried mushrooms first, so I don't know what's going to happen when I will try when I've tried LSD first. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but I, but I only I, I only did LSD once as well. Mm-hmm. It was actually <laughs> weird story. Um, it was a few days after I did the ecstasy, and it was with the same girl that I fell in love with at that moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a really weird ride, man. That moment, that that, that time <laughs> in my life, I just felt yeah. it was the festival. And when I came there, I, I had this I I had this intention like maybe I'm gonna do LSD. I would try it, and then when I tried ecstasy, and then I fell in love, and then the girl happened to have have um lsd and her girl something else so we were like okay she had she had left i was in love and it was perfect setting mm. but for me when when i did lsd um i think i got a little bit um over um too much impulses like the festival it wasn't really uh clear. so when i what i had with the the psilocybin was that everything felt connected and everything felt one but when i did lsd everything was just a total mind fuck i couldn't really <laughs> grasp anything at all anymore everyone was like what the fuck i don't get a thing about it <laughs> <laughs> okay and to confirm so you were in a pretty uh a stimulatory environment you were at the festival where there was lots of big noise there were lots of people uh yep. lots of lights all that sort of thing yeah exactly yeah mm. and um i think that's also a part of life not not getting stuff you know we can say that we know everything but <laughs> i also have no idea about things you know i, I can never say anything for sure and it's so weird and but it for me like the, the the mushrooms was a really friendly experience and i could see that i could just change the world with my mind but in in lsd i kind of lost myself and um i did have some really nice time especially when i was walking around with the girl and we were just like hand in hand and everything was heaven and everything was fine and everything was beautiful and but most of the part it was like oh man i've I don't get it, man. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> was, it, was this the uh, the Burning Man yeah. festival by any chance, or was this just like a music festival? Uh, it's a, it was a music festival in Belgium. I actually want to go to Burning Man once. I, I think that would be nice to go there. Mm. Go there. Yeah. Do you do you know much about it? Yeah, I, f- I know it's like um, it's it, it it's like more a new society created on like um, sharing stuff. It's it, there's no money there, right? So it's it's all about just sharing your your vibes, the thing you have to share. For example, if I want to make a puzzle, I'm going to make a puzzle and I share it with people. If I want to do juggling, I'm going to do juggling. Someone else will make food. Someone else will do massage. Everyone will just work together to make a great experience. It sounds beautiful. Wow. Yeah, this sounds like I don't want to stereotype anyone, um, but like sort of like hippie. Hippie hippie land. I'd love to go there, man. Um, I'm halfway there. Uh, wow. <laughs> we'll have to go to the get of the two. This sounds like a, a blast. Yeah, man, that would be nice. <laughs> we'll be nice. We'll invite the audience <laughs> along as well. We'll just have a fucking party. No, that sounds amazing. Wow. Um, the LSD experience, I think that's the hardest thing I've been through. And that's also the last experience I had with psychedelics. Um, at the end of the experience, I went um, to my tent and the girl also, she had to go in the morning. And um, when I went to my tent, there was this weird realization and this wasn't rational i I can talk it it totally not rational but it was all fear-based really emotional so i went in my tent and the only really thing that i thought is i'm going to die i i really knew that i was the one that was going to die and of course i didn't really like it that i was going to die man what the fuck (laughs) and but the hardest part of me for me was that i was going to die as an insignificant being, being who didn't really accomplish much in his life, who didn't really brought value to other people, mm-hmm. but as someone who died as an overdose on a festival, because that's what I thought. I had too much weird stuff to each other, and then I was overdosed. Mm. So that was so obvious. And I went to uh, my friend, and he was sleeping outside the tent. He's actually my roommate made now. Uh, but I, uh, I went to him, and I, I said, dude, I don't know anymore. I- I'm going to die, man. <laughs> fuck and uh and then he said so he was also like half asleep and he said you know what those things they happen at a festival man doesn't that don't 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 worry it does it happens at festivals <laughs> and i was like yeah man you're right it, it, those things happen at festivals sometimes people die because they took too much weird <laughs> stuff <laughs> but yeah it's kind of sucks to be that to be that guy you know like <laughs> you wow. don't want to be that guy who did something really stupid <laughs> yeah. would, would you so, con- would you consider that a bad trip I think yeah well at that point maybe yeah but the 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 re- the things that I got out of it are so positive that I think I, I'm really happy that I had that experience even though it was really suckish at the moment mm-hmm. but I think yeah that that's kind of a bad trip also the 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 everything is fucked up I everything is a mind fuck was really also like a little bit of a bad trip but I think it's just a judge you know it's a judgment like 
this is bad, this is good, but I, I, I had a lot of value about it and this is just what happened. So mm. it's a trip. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Incredible. I've heard, I've heard, a, uh, you know, a lot more stories about people who've had sort of, sort of similar experiences to yours where they're, they're put in a place where they're very challenged, you know, they, they think they're dying even and they, they can't get through it. But when they look back at it, they go, you know what, this was actually, wasn't necessarily easy, but it was a beneficial experience, yeah. which I think is really exactly. interesting because yeah. as someone who hasn't done psychedelics before going into it, my yeah. only concern is having a bad trip. But if I can, I guess, reframe it in a way that, okay, maybe, maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't. If it does, at least I can try and, uh, see it as a, a beneficial experience at the end of it. But saying that I have no Thank idea you. what it's yeah. like to have a trip. So I, I just got no yeah. idea. <laughs> But I, but I think I think that's a really really good way to to see it um, to to make it a beneficial experience. Even like you, then you can take the fear of having a bad trip away. Like mm. okay, maybe I will have a bad trip, but even though when I will have one, I can I will have learned from it. I can internalize it. It's not the end of the world, you know. Mm. I think that's a that's a great way of looking at it, man. Okay, nice. cool. Yeah, I'm I'm just scared that if if I yeah. I go. Th- go in there thinking I will have one, then it might create a self-fulfilling prophecy where the more I think about it, the more likely it will come to being in my experience. But I guess if I reframe it enough in my mind, I can just sort of yeah. surrender to it and let it be, let it be what it is. And then I think exactly. that, yeah. that, like at least in my experiences with lucid dreams and sleep paralysis, where I've been in some funny sort of places, I found that if I surrender to the experience, whether it's a nightmare or I'm in sleep paralysis, I don't know if you have delved into that much, but sort of like a nightmare almost where I, I have mm-hmm. full awareness. And I found that the more I struggle and the more I resist it, the more I tell it to go away, uh, the worse it gets. And so I, in my mind, maybe that's similar to what it will be like in a psychedelic experience. If I just surrender to it, then that's where I, I feel safe. So that's sort of my line of thinking. Just surrender, man. It's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you, have you, you, you mentioned lucid <laughs> me, dreams before. Wait, have you had any yeah. lucid dreams? When I was, I was just sleeping. I realized that I was in a dream, lucid dream, but then because I realized it, I got such a shock that I just phew, woke up again. So, but not the controlling thing. And that was only, the controlling was only with the half sleep stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Did, you, did you like a lot of, uh, did you try a lot? Like, um, try to prime yourself? Yeah. So interesting story. Uh, lucid dreaming is what got me into reading. It's what got me into self-development and it's what's ultimately led me here today with you talking about psychedelics. I, uh, I picked up a copy of Exploring the Loose, cool. Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by Stephen Labarge. And it's one of the only books that really has, well, presents science in a great way that backs lucid dreaming, which I thought was really interesting. I thought, okay, this sounds kind of crazy, but it's even got some scientific backing. So I'm thinking, all right. Sure, I'll go for it. Why not? And uh, I practiced for a couple of weeks. And I think it was after about two or three weeks. So I might have had my first lucid dream. Uh, I'd have to go back to my dream journals to describe the exact experience because it's, it's really hard to remember dreams uh, vividly. But it's all in my dream journals. But yeah, yeah, I did practice for three weeks. And what I did was I would record my dreams in a dream journal. So every morning I'd wake up write it in my journal, write what I experienced, what I felt, what I heard, what I saw. Uh, and after, you know, two weeks or whatever I said, I uh, eventually yeah, started to have my first lucid dreams. And what I did when I was in bed at night is I would have an intention and I'd basically tell myself, when I'm dreaming, I'll become lucid. When I'm dreaming, I'll become aware that I'm dreaming. So that's that's the intention technique. Um, very simple. And, and it worked, surprisingly. I didn't have any... What, what a lot of cool. lucid dreamers, uh, why they fail is because they try too hard. And if you're, you know, you're sort of stressed at night, you, you really want this lucid dream and then you don't have it. You, you know, a lot of people give up so fast, but you, you gotta have a very gentle expectation about it. And that's why so many lucid dreamers fail. You've just gotta be gentle about it and just let it be. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If you do, you do. So, um, that's how I, I got into that world. Yeah. And it was just incredible. There's some nights where I've woke up from lucid dreams and gone, holy fucking crap, that was insane. <laughs> I'm talking like, you know, having the real experience of of flying without fear of falling or hurting yourself. Because when you're in that dream and you realize it, you go, holy crap, this is a dreamscape. I can do whatever I want and nothing here is real. Oh, so you yeah. can just yeah. start flying like a real person. My style is I sort of swim as if I'm in water. I don't know how to do Superman style like some other lucid dreamers do, but it was sort of like I'm swimming through air and I just jump up and I'd float through my roof. 
like whatever you expect to happen in that dream, you can sort of direct the course of the dream. So I just expected that I wouldn't hit the ceiling and I didn't and I just sort of float through it. It's it's just bizarre, man. Cool, dude. Yeah. And are you still doing it or? Uh, not, not so much anymore. I've, you know, sort of getting caught in the hustle and bustle of daily life, you know, because it's something you got to really be intentional about and uh and practice so it's been a while but with that said i i get to talk to people like you instead so you know i'm enjoying life and and that's great <laughs> yeah that's exactly so, so perhaps we'll start uh rounding off the corners a bit here with this this podcast man um i got another question for you so, there's one uh, so uh, there's, there's also one one little thing that i yeah oh yeah we're, yeah, go for we're it, go talking for it. to each other oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well I, I was still talking LSD experience and I didn't really got to finish my story, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it was about dying, you know. But at the moment that I died, when I, when I woke up, everything was so new. Everything was, it's as if you are reborn again. And since I, I, I realized that, I, um, okay, I'm already dead. Can you, can you grasp that idea that you are already dead? And since I'm already dead, it doesn't matter what I do. LSD experience, I felt like, whoa, man, I can just do whatever i like to do because i as this guy on a festival with the over what else what what worse can, thing can happen you know so <laughs> <laughs> so after that it's like okay man life is amazing and maybe i will die in a weird way but even though at this point in life when i will die i will have a much better experience because i left some things behind i i did the things that i love to do and every day i'm living like this is what I want to do. This is how I want to live. This is what I want to give to people. And before I had to reflect on myself, like I haven't been the one that I wanted to be. And later I realized, okay, now I can do this. And since I'm already dead, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's going to happen eventually. You, you are going to die. So mm-hmm. it's good to think about it, I think, sometimes. Mm. It's, it's, has, so, has that sort of taken away your fear of death or anything like that? Mm, it doesn't mean that I'm not afraid anymore, mm-hmm. but... I think I, I'm not sure if that is even possible. Like sometimes it's just a natural response to have fear, but it really helped me a lot. I think, well, I can go peacefully now. I like life, but if it's my time, I think I can go peacefully. It's it's okay. I, I did what I wanted to do and I lived every day the way I wanted to live. And so that was, I think that's even the most important experience I had with psychedelics. Although I'm not sure if I can judge about it that this is more important than that. But after that, I really felt reborn and new and I can live how i want to do wow incredible i can't i can try my best to comprehend it um but wow I'm, I'm so, just... so for example if, if someone would put a gun to your head would you be able to uh do you think do you think it you would be okay with it i'd kick the guy in the nuts <laughs> yeah of course but, like if there are five, five like, like really bad big muscle guys <laughs> 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 um well, I mean, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to die. No, I'd be like, uh, I'd, I'd struggle. I'd, I'd freak out. What, what do you want to do before? Are there, are there things you, you left undone? You didn't do like tell some people you love them or? I, I want to be talking to people like you. I don't want to go to my tombstone. Yeah. I want, I want to talk to people like I you. This imagine. is great fun. Yeah, cool, nice dudes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I'm talking about is more like. Um, did you tell everyone that you what you wanted to tell them? Did you do what you wanted to do? Did you? Yeah, you're doing. Obviously, you're doing what you'd like to do. That that's that's amazing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But it's as just... an individual, <laughs> yeah. Just pause there in case I, I cut you off, dude. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, incredible. Thanks for that. That's. Just, oh, I'm just blown away, man. I'm I'm flustered. That's great. I was gonna ask you another yet another another question, and yeah. I think um. I guess, okay, yeah, this is what it was. Um, you mentioned earlier in the call that I think, you know, you're not in, in any rush or feel the need to try psychedelics on a regular basis or anything. Like, uh, do you see yourself in the future sometime taking another psychedelic or having another experience or do you feel like you could, you could wait? Uh, I don't think I will actually. I think I'm fine. Mm. Um, I shifted my, my, um, psychedelic use to meditation and, it feels okay, but I never know, you know, maybe in the future I will be different. I, I change every moment. So, mm. but at this point I kind of had a resolve, like I'm fine. I'm, I'm totally fine. So I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. That's what I hear from a lot of other people. So you don't have any sort of drive to use it recreationally, like sort of just for fun or partying, like a lot of people do. 
No, definitely not. Yeah. Maybe maybe once with my girlfriend or something, but also to to if she is interested and she wants to do it with me, something like that. Like I think it more like in a social way, but not really for myself. Mm, sure. Uh, could could you describe was there a difference when when like listening to sounds or music? Um, what, your sense of hearing was that was that much different? Um. Yeah, it's really it. It feels like coming home, you know. <laughs> like for example, when you're listening to the Beatles, it's like whoa, <laughs> love. <laughs> it's just like it feels so so lonely. And and I had this band. It's called um, Carbon Based Life Forms. And oh man, I will send it to you. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. But on that music, just pff, floating away. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay. music is nice. Okay. So okay. So if there's to sort of round this off, if there's just one one takeaway you've got from you know having these psychedelic experiences, what what's the number one takeaway that you've you've implemented into your life that's that's benefited you? Uh, what do you mean by takeaway? Like the one uh, insight or something, or the uh, yeah, one... basically an insight. Yeah. What's the number one out yeah. of all the insights or lessons you've learned from that psychedelic experiences you've had? What what's the number one? Everything is fine and it, it's getting better as well. It's it's a bit of a paradox, but in this moment, everything is okay. And everything you're looking for, it's right now, right here inside you. Mm, wow. Very good. All right. I tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. And I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the podcast. This has been a very enjoyable call and it was sort of at last notice for the listeners listening in right now. I sort of just spontaneously said, Marin, do you want to hop on a podcast right here, right now? Cause I'm really interested in talking to you and he accepted. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, dude. Yeah, you too, man. I like uh, this spontaneous stuff. It's really good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right. Thank you very much. If you'd like three gold nuggets from the book I'm currently reading, packed into a short, entertaining weekly email, then head to brandonnankavell.com slash subscribe. This is also the best way to interact with me and keep up with what I'm doing. Again, head to brandonnankavell.com slash subscribe. As usual, thank you for listening, my friends. I release new episodes every week. Make sure you don't miss one by subscribing. It's super easy and means a lot to me. Go to iTunes, search for The 1% Show, and click subscribe. Once again, I'm your host, Brandon Nankervell, and I'll see you in the next episode.